If you go on Vapor website and you click on Fluent, you will read that Fluent is an ORM framework for Swift. This means that Fluent is an object relational mapper or object relational mapping for Swift language. But what exactly is ORM? So let's first go ahead and talk about object relational mapping, also known as ORM. In ORM, we have a class. A class can be a movie class. It can be anything, any entity that you want to be defined. And we're going to create that class since we're using Fluent in Swift language. That class can have properties like ID, first name, last name, and email. Now, the basic idea of ORM is that this class, the movie class, will get special functionality so it can talk to or insert and perform operations on the movies table. Movies table will also have similar fields like ID, first name, last name, and email. And you can see that these name of the columns in the table are appropriate and convention based for Postgres database. So it doesn't really matter if your movie class has the different column names or different property names, the movies table can have different column names, but we will learn more about how to map those columns correctly. So what happens is that the ORM kind of like sits in the middle. This is the Fluent framework or any other ORM. And the job of the ORM is that to provide special functionality to your movie class so that the movie class can talk to the table. This means that the movie class can have functions like save, to save a movie, delete, to delete a movie, and to find all, to find all the movies, and many other different operations. So instead of you writing SQL by hand, you use an ORM, which will generate and execute SQL on your behalf. So that is known as an ORM. And we will be using Fluent ORM for our example. Now, if we go back to the Vapor documentation on Fluent, you will be able to see that this Fluent ORM provides different drivers. Drivers mean that if you want to work with Postgres, you can use the Postgres driver. If you want to work with SQLite, you can use the SQLite driver. And they also provide MySQL as well as MongoDB, which is a document database driver. So it's pretty cool that just by using Fluent and just by using the correct driver, you can actually talk to the correct kind of a database. So this really is amazing. For Fluent applications or for applications that are using ORM, you need to create models. So this is exactly what we'll be learning, that how to set up our Postgres database and also how to be creating these models that will allow us to talk to the tables in our databases. So let's go ahead and go to the next lecture where you will learn how to set up Postgres database on Elephant SQL. Now that you know that in this section, we'll be doing a very quick tour of the Postgres database. We will not really be creating our Swift UI interface. I just want to show you how you can connect Vapor to a Postgres database, okay? and we will be returning JSON. And then when we do the project in the future, then I will do it again to show you repetition is key when you're learning something new. Now, instead of creating or downloading Postgres and running Postgres on your own machine, it's a good idea to just host Postgres somewhere else. And that somewhere is Elephant SQL. Elephant SQL is a website where you can publish, host, your database for completely for free. They do have different pricing tiers, as you can see. We will be using Tiny Turtle for our application, and that will be more than enough. So the first thing you need to do is to create an account and log in. Another reason that we are not really installing Postgres on our, on our own machine, although you can, it's because of the complexities of and different ways of installing Postgres. I mean, you can definitely install Postgres if you want to. That's perfectly fine. But I don't want to show you all the complexities and then people will have problems with different versions of Postgres or different versions of installers. So instead of that, 
it's much easier to just do it on Elephant SQL. Because then if you do it on your local machine, which is fine, but then you'll have to deploy it also. So with Elephant SQL, it's already deployed. I'm going to go ahead and log in. Now, when you log in, it's going to show you this screen where you can see all the database instances. Right now, I don't really see anything. It's completely blank. I'm going to create a new instance. And you can write the name of your instance, anything you want. So I'm just going to call it Movies DB. Tiny Turtle is perfectly fine. We do want to use a free plan. You can see there are other plans available. I think you do have to provide your credit card information if you want to go to a different plan. But for us, Tiny Turtle free plan is perfectly fine. Let's click on the select region. Region by default, for me at least, it's selected Northern Virginia, US East 1. That's perfectly fine. Let's go next. Okay, everything looks good. We will review it and then we will create the instance. And there we go. It is created. Now, if I go ahead and click on this movies DB, I mean, you can name it anything you want. Then you can see a little bit more details about the database. A couple of things that are important for us personally is the name of the server. And the name of the server is just this part, not this part. So when we will paste the name of the server, it's just this part. Then we have the username as well as the database name. And you can see that they are both the same. And obviously the password. So all of these things we need. Okay. So at this point, we have created our database. The database does not really have any tables, I mean, at least for our custom tables. You can also use the browser to check out the database or run SQL queries. But right now, we don't really have anything. We don't have any tables, so there's no point of writing any queries over here. So at this point, you have created your database on Elephant SQL. The next step would be to how do we connect this with our Vapor application? So let's go ahead and learn about that in the next lecture. This video is brought to you by my latest course, Mastering Full Stack iOS Development Using Swift UI and Vapor. This is a 12 hour course which takes you on a journey of creating a full stack application. This means that you are not only going to learn the Swift UI, which is the client side, but you're also going to be learning about the server side. You will create your own server using Vapor and you will integrate it with Postgres database. You will also learn about MongoDB protecting route authentication using JWT deployment middleware, so much more, so much more. This is a complete course. If you wanted to learn full stack development, then this is the only course you need. 12 hour course, already have 200 plus students registered. If you want to register for this course, then check out the YouTube description. There's a link and click on that link. Use that link to register and enroll in this course. Thank you so much. Let's get back to the video. All right, everyone. So now let's go ahead and see that how we can add the Fluent package and also the Postgres driver to our project. So I have created a very basic Vapor application using the Vapor new command. Remember the Vapor new command? Well, it's kind of like this. Let me show you this one. So I've created a Vapor new application, Vapor new movies app. It's just called movies app and it's going to use a default template. Okay. And when you open this app, when you open package.swift, this is what we see. So all of this stuff is created by Vapor itself as we covered in the previous lectures. Now, one of the things that we need to do is we need to add package for Fluent. We need to add also package, not only for Fluent, but also for Fluent Postgres driver. So how do we do that? Well, let's take a look at the dependencies over here. The first and the only dependency that you see is of Vapor. 
obviously we are using vapor, so we need that dependency. The other thing we need is the Fluent, which is the ORM. So let's go ahead and add Fluent package. So there we go, I added the Fluent package. But we also need to add the Fluent driver for Postgres, because Fluent can work with MongoDB, SQLite, MySQL, and all that stuff. But we're trying to use Postgres, so that is why we're going to go ahead and add a Fluent driver dependency for Postgres. So we added two different things. We added the Fluent and we added the Fluent Postgres driver. But we're still not done yet because in the targets right over here, we also need to add the dependencies, okay? So let's go ahead and add the product. We will have our product which we'll call Fluent. And again, which you can already guess, Fluent Postgres driver as a target dependency. So there we go. Okay, so this is going to at least allow us to uh, have the dependencies. And as soon as I add these dependencies and save it, you can already, uh, you can see on the left-hand side, it's already doing all of this stuff. It's downloading all of these dependencies. It's updating all of those package, downloading packages and all this stuff. And now it's processing those files. So our dependencies are now added. The next step that we want to do is to initialize our database and we also want to create the tables. But initialization part is something that we can actually do. So let's go back to the configure file. In the configure file, we can initialize the database. Okay. Another thing to keep in mind is don't select iPads or iPhone. I mean, we're not really running the server on an iPhone, so select Mac. So that's very important. Always make sure that the Mac is selected, not the iPhone or the iPad or the Apple Watch, Mac. We're running the server on the Mac. Now we are inside the configure function and we need to set up our database. In order to set up our database, we need a couple of different information. So we'll go to Elephant SQL, we'll go to the database, and this is all the information that we need. Let's go back. We'll call app.databases. Now you can see the database is not even coming up because we need to import a couple of different things. So let's go ahead and import Fluent. Fluent. And I will also import Fluent Postgres driver. Inside the configure, because that is place where you will configure stuff like the routes, middlewares, I'm just gonna go ahead and say app dot databases dot use and now I can pass in the configuration. So you can see that I can pass in kind of like a different kind of a driver if I want to. I can pass in, you know, there are many different things you can pass in over here. Okay. But what we want to do is we want to allow the user to set up the Postgres database. So let's go ahead and see that how we can set up the Postgres database. I'm just going to go ahead and say Postgres providing the host name. So what is the host name? What is the username? What is the password? And as meaning, what kind of a database are we using? Well, in this case, it's easy. We can just say Postgres SQL. So that part is done, great. But where do we get the host name and the username and the password, all right? And also the database name, not sure why it didn't edit that, but we also need the database name. Yeah, we need that. All of this information will be coming from Elephant SQL. Let's get the host name. Now only copy this part, this inside the bracket, that's not really included in the host name. So we're just gonna copy this part. That's your host name, done. What's the username? Well, username as well as the database name, they're both the same. So let's go ahead and select username and the database name. And what about the password? Well, here's the password, copy it and paste it right there. And there you go, that's it, that's pretty much it. That's all you need to do is, all you need to connect your Vapor application with the database. Now, although this will connect to the database using the host name and username and 
password and to a particular database, but it will, it doesn't really have any tables, right? I mean, we don't really have any tables, anything. Let's go ahead and first build our application, see if it actually builds successfully. We don't really have any custom routes. All the routes that we have are actually given to us by the Vapor default application, as you can see. So we will have to create eventually some custom routes for our app. But right now we don't we don't have anything. That's fine. We will create the routes. And we will do the whole process again when we're building the app. I always like to do these things in small pieces so that right now we are not focusing on any app. We're not focusing on relationships and all those things. I'm just trying to give you a feel of how to connect to a database. And then we can maybe talk about that later. Okay, so everything works fine. That's great. Looks like that we should be able to connect to our database. The next step for us would be to create the tables because at this particular moment, we don't really have any tables. So what table we want to create? I want to create a table called probably movies so that I can store movie. Okay, and I can return movies and update movies and delete movies and all that stuff. So in the next lecture, we'll be looking at how do we create a table when we're using Postgres, when we're using Vapor and Fluent.